What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another Pioneer video and today we're going to be taking a look at a Rakdos deck but not the typical Rakdos mid-range deck. We're actually taking a look at the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. The deck that I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe like Rakdos Sacrifice, at least uh, in, from what I've seen in my personal opinion, is kind of like beats what the Rakdos mid-range decks uh, can't seem to do does it uh, a little bit faster, I believe, than what Rakdos mid-range can do. So uh, I felt like it was worth it to kind of take a look at the deck, see what's going on here, and kind of explain as we go uh, what exactly the Rakdos Sacrifice deck is, because uh, it it's kind of like a throwback to an older archetype. We saw this before in Pioneer. I did a video on this, like oh, I think, like a year ago. Now, like, it's been a long time, so uh, I, t I look forward to taking a look at it. I hope you guys do as well. And, of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel already and you want to see more videos like this, you're interested in modern, stuff like that, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the notification bell. And, of course, going to the description of this video and finding the links to the deck, to the Twitch channel, and to my Discord server as well. Feel free to follow those as well while you're there. Uh, so, Rakdos Sacrifice. Uh, so the Rakdos midrange deck that we're kind of used to seeing is like trying to curve out, you know, playing Thoughtseize on turn one, then you play like Blood Tithe Harvester, and then you're playing uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and then you're kind of going to Shieldred, and from there you're just kind of like picking off your opponent's threats one by one, slowly killing them with Shieldred, and if they're really not even able to get anything going, you're turning your creature sideways and closing the game out even quicker with your, some of your aggressively costed cards. And while this deck, as we've just shown, you know, is playing a, you know, for Blood Tithe Harvester, for Fable of the Mirror Breaker, as probably most Rakdos decks should be playing, uh, this deck goes about uh, accomplishing this goal in a different way. So we are playing uh, Cat Oven in this deck. So uh, for those not familiar, which is Oven, you tap Sacrifice Creature, you make a food token, and if the Sacrifice Creature's toughness is 4 or greater, you create food to two food tokens instead. And of course you have Cauldron Familiar, that when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life, and you can sacrifice a food to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. So uh, you can loop the cat uh, by sacking it to the Witch's Oven, making a food, and then sacrificing the food to bring it back or drain your opponent for a damage. Uh, this in itself isn't like too crazy. I mean, you have like some of these tricks where like you can block with a Cauldron Familiar, you can sack it to the oven in response, uh, and then you know you create the food, you're able to bring it back, and of course you prevented some damage uh, as well as long as it doesn't trample, as long as your creature doesn't trample. But on top of all this, you have a card called Mayhem Devil that says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So with like the Cauldron familiar which is oven kind of like loop going if you have a mayhem devil in there you sack the cauldron familiar to which is oven which deals your opponent a damage you sacrifice a food which will deal them a damage and then cauldron familiar comes into play drains them so through this loop you will gain a life and your opponent will essentially lose three life or you know you could start picking off your opponent's creatures as well getting to deal two damage throughout that loop and then drain your opponent for one so this is kind of the engine we're starting to get going. Uh, in this case, you want to have uh, more Mayhem Devils and more Witches Ovens. Uh, having multiple cats doesn't really do anything uh, unless you have uh, multiple like foods to bring them all back at once. To in which case, you know you're kind of like insulated more from like the exile base effects from like the graveyard. But you know ultimately you want to have more ovens, more Mayhem Devils to deal more damage and, you know, get your opponent dead a lot faster, which this deck can kind of do out of nowhere with some of the tricks and stuff. Uh, one trick in particular that you can do, uh, you have, like, Claim the Firstborn, takes uh, control of a creature with uh, cost 3 or less, gives it, uh, untaps it, gives it haste, you know, you can take one of your opponent's big creatures, you can take, like, your opponent's Blood Tithe Harvester, for example, you can take it and then, like, you could, you know, kill one of your opponent's other creatures with said Blood Tithe Harvester. Or, in, like, classic uh, Rakdos sacrifice fashion, you take, like, their big thing, you know, their big 4-5 power thing, you attack with it, you deal them some damage, and then you sacrifice to the Witch's Oven, and you get more food tokens. Uh, and while that doesn't seem like it's too, like, all that great, because it's like, oh, you have, like, one more food token, like, I guess you could, you know, bring back another cat if you have it, what, is, what you know, so on. Uh, in this case, uh, you have a little trick that you can do with the Cauldron Familiar, where if you have multiple food tokens, you can sacrifice a food to put its trigger on the stack, 
and then hold priority and you can sack into their food triggered again. And while normally with just a culture familiar, that doesn't make any sense, you know, unless you're just trying to, you know, beat someone's like graveyard base, like exile removal, what have you. If you have a Mayhem Devil in play, you're actually able to stack up Mayhem Devil triggers as well to ping the opponent. So like if you have like five foods in play, you can sack one to bring the College Familiar back, hold priority, sack another one, so on and so on, and just deal your opponent like a ton of damage out of nowhere. You know, and that could just end the game. You know, and there's a way that this deck can have a little bit of reach, kind of like the idea of, you know, playing this uh, Rakdos Sacrifice type deck over the normal Rakdos deck is that you're a little bit more to the ground you can you know play some of these cards that uh, in general I think would be worse in just the stock Rakdos list but get a whole lot better and just have some pretty good synergies against some of the other like aggro decks in the format just because you do have ways of just kind of picking off their creatures slowing them down to the point where you can just loop cat until they eventually die or getting like a Croxa into play and killing your opponent with a Croxa on top of like some of these other like idiots. Plus getting to like claim the firstborn, uh, some of your opponent's things and makes uh, attacking bad for them because it steals like their biggest thing. You know, of course, cover your mana costs three or less, of course, but a lot of like the good efficient creatures cost that much. You know, so in like the mirrors, you can take your opponent's mayhem devil, attack with it, sack a bunch of things, and then at the end, sack it so they don't get it back, and then you end up dealing a ton of damage and probably ultimately winning the game from that. Uh, some more ways to kind of facilitate uh, this kind of like sack plan. You have Unlucky Witness and you have uh, Blood Tithe Harvester. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester, of course, being, you know, featured in both decks, makes a blood token when it comes into play, and then you can tap it and sacrifice it, and a creature gets minus X, minus X, where X is twice the number of blood tokens you control. can only activate as a sorcery, but, you know, this card is going to kill uh, two twos, you know, two toughness creatures, and then four toughness creatures, the more that you play, and so on. Uh, you have seen, like, a card like this played against, uh, or played with, like, uh, Voldaren Epicure that also makes blood tokens, and actually a card that I wouldn't mind seeing in this deck for the fact that it does deal damage when it comes into play. You know, it's a fine enough card to, like, sack and everything, and, like, the blood tokens do kind of fuel these blood tithe harvesters, another uh, thing that you can sacrifice to kind of dig closer to finding more spells or maybe trying to find other lands and so on. But uh, aside from that, like, blood tithe harvester is one of the better two drops that you can play in the Rakdos colors and uh, gives you removal, and when you don't need the removal, it's a fairly aggressive uh, stat-wise for the mana cost, and it gives you another, like, permanent that you can sack, that you can either, you know, put cards that you want in the graveyard, maybe, like, a College of Familiar to get back with, like, a food token, or, you know, help you dig towards, like, Mayhem Devils, claim the Firstborns, more Witches Ovens, and so on. Uh, we talked about the one Croxa, uh, just... A good, a good creature, a two mana, like, it comes into the battlefield, it gets sacrificed unless it escapes, so it does have some synergy with Mayhem Devil. You could also play this, and then with its trigger on the stack, which is oven it, ended up getting two food out of it, being able to set up some of the Cauldron Familiar slash Mayhem Devil shenanigans that we had talked about earlier. Uh, of course, just can end the game very quickly by putting pressure on your opponent's hand. You kind of, like, grind your opponent out of resources in a way where, like, their removal spells are kind of missing on a lot of your creatures because you want a lot of these creatures to die, and you can make them die on, like, your own terms as well, and they repeatedly get to come back. So, like, Croxa is a pretty good way for this deck to close out a game. Uh, of course, you have uh, Four Fatal Push to kind of deal with some of, like, the other creatures that... You know, if you need to deal with multiple creatures in a turn, deal with, like, opposing Blood Tithe Harvesters and Mayhem Devils, you're, you're ab easily able to trigger the Revolt, because, again, you are playing, like, Witch's Oven, and uh, you have a lot of these cards that just kind of want to die anyway on their own. Four Thoughtseize is, like, a staple of any black deck in the format nowadays. Uh, four Deadly Dispute is, like, a way you sacrifice an artifact or a creature. You know, you can make, like, a food token with, like, your Crocs or whatever, and, like, one of the leftover foods, you can sacrifice it to then, you know, draw two cards and create a treasure token. Deadly Dispute is also a way that you can sacrifice, like, a Culture Familiar, Unlucky Witness, uh, which I guess we didn't really talk about. Unlucky Witness, when it dies, you exile the top two cards at your library, and then you may play one of those cards to your next end step. Uh, essentially, with, like, Deadly Dispute, you can do this. You get to draw two cards with the Deadly Dispute, 
make a treasure token, and you'll also get your pick of one of the best two cards that you have from the Unlucky Witness as well. You know, so you're able to play a land on like turn three, so you can cast this Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, you have like four mana, so you're able to like double spell with like two Blood Tithe Harvesters, or cast like a Familiar and Witch's Oven, leave up a leave up a Fatal Push, which you can trigger a revolt from the treasure that it makes. Uh, you could also, you know, play Mayhem Devil, sacrifice the treasure to like net a mana, and then play like a Cauldron Familiar, Unlucky Witness. Some one of your one drops and uh, get a trigger off it as well by sacrificing the uh, treasure as well. 22 lands. I think this is totally fine because, again, you do make uh, a decent amount of like blood tokens just from the Blood Tithe Harvester. So you definitely have uh, a way to hit your second and third land drop pretty easily. And then through like Deadly Disputes and uh, Blood Tithe Harvester, uh, blood tokens, and Unlucky Witnesses and things like that, uh, even like Fable the Mirror Breaker. You're able to kind of hit the amount of lanes that you want. Some notable ones being uh, Takanuma, which allows you to return a creature or planeswalker from your graveyard, essentially for four mana. If, you know, if you have uh, the one of Crocs, that will cost three. But getting to rebuy some of like your Mayhem Devils or even like Blood Tithe Harvesters are a pretty big game. And some of these like grindier matchups when you are going to be expected to play against like you know, uh, the Rakdos deck, you're going to play against a pretty resilient, like, Boros aggro deck, you have, like, mono green stuff kind of, like, flying around, uh, even, like, mono white and things like that, uh, Hive and Den of the Bugbear, just, uh, good mana sinks, uh, Hive can mess with your opponent's graveyard, Den, of course, getting to make, uh, 1-1 one, one goblins tapped and attacking, of course, if you end up getting to the point where you have multiple mana to, uh, activate Den, you can activate it multiple times and get multiple 1-1s, one, uh, and of course, usual suspects of uh, Black Leaf Cliffs, Blight Step Pathway, and Blood Crypt, all uh, lands that will come into play untapped with their own conditions. Blood Cliffs being if you control two or a few other lands. Blight Step Pathway, you have to choose a color that you want it to be on, and Blood Crypt, of course, two life. But nothing when you know you're able to kind of gain that life back with like Cauldron Familiar and get to the board early and often against your opponent. Uh, you have Sulphur Springs, which is the red uh, red black pain land. Uh, you have a Soken Zen to make some 1-1s. One of course, that can you know, push damage, cause granted they give them haste. On top of just having uh, more chump blockers, more things to sacrifice to your Deadly Disputes, your Witch's Oven, stuff like that to trigger Mayhem Devils. On the sideboard, you have Duress, Rending Volley, Damping Sphere, Shieldred's Edict, you know, uh, Unlicensed Hurst, a Furnace Reigns, which is another... Uh, card that can take your opponent's creature this time taking a little bit bigger ones you kind of see this more in like the mono green matchups where your opponent's playing like cavaliers and they're playing uh really i guess really just like the cavaliers and stuff like that and some of their other big sideboard creatures where you can just take this hit your opponent for a big chunk of damage probably kill them and then of course if you don't uh getting to witch's oven sack it make multiple food tokens and just kind of tempo your opponent that way uh, you have Coligan's Command, Omnixil is the Adversary, uh, another creature that you can like sacrifice something uh, to this card, get another Planeswalker, you get like uh, can create 1-1 one, one Devils, that when they die you can ping your, you know, ping something, you know, doing damage that way, forcing your opponent to lose life or discard cards, and of course like the big minus 7, target player draws 7 and loses 7 life, could just definitely be a finisher, don't be afraid to target yourself with it as well if you got life to play with, because... Most of the time, getting to draw seven cards in, like, one shot is going to win the game. Go ahead and see Modern with the one ring. You know, players have drawn a lot more cards for less life. So, like, getting to draw seven and pay seven is, you know, t is honestly a pretty good rate, all things considered. And that is the Recto Sacrifice deck for the Pioneer format. All in all, I, I honestly see why this deck is kind of seeing, you know, some play. It's definitely got legs here. It's powerful. It is doing the things that you essentially want to do as like a sort of kind of a mid-range deck in the format. Of course, it's not going as big as like the Rakdos mid-range deck, but it is pretty explosive in the earlier turns. It actually has like a decent mid-game with the more Mayhem Devils you have. Of course, like if you're able to get the Cauldron Familiar combo, you know, that loop going, as well as having a Mayhem Devil, it's kind of hard for your opponent to interact with it because 
your opponent has to interact with a creature that's going to come back anyway. They have to kill the Mayhem Devil, and they still haven't gotten rid of, like, the source of just, like, you gaining a, a life or two every turn and uh, stopping your ability to just find more Mayhem Devils and win with some of the other cards because they have to spend multiple cards to kind of try to break up your break up your loop that you can just easily reestablish later on in the game. So... That's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the notification bell so you know when videos like this and others get posted. And of course, I'll follow the links down in the description below for the deck, for my Twitch channel, and for the Discord server as well. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.